today on Judge Faith. Her jackpot was his ATM. I was at the casino and I won a large sum of money, 690 something thousand dollars. Wow, okay. Well, I didn't call her right away because I knew everybody was calling her. Do you have any of the money left? And later, did he fail to fix her favorite TV? When it all boils down, I love my TV set. You can't satisfy all of your customers. Hold up, wait a minute. Let me put some real pimping in it. He must have went in his basement and got this used port. Then he turned around and said he'll fix it. And then he said he needs some gas money. You had a black screen before he came out. Right, He put right. a power board on it, now it's working. Right. What is the issue? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Loretta Holmes says her brother borrowed a portion of her casino winnings for truck driving school and is refusing to pay her back. She's suing for an unpaid loan. Defendant Albert Gonzalez says his sister previously forgave the loan, but recently became obsessed with getting her money back and has alienated him from their family functions. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Holmes versus Gonzalez. Thank you, Juan. Loretta Holmes? Yes. Hi, Your Honor. Hi. You are suing the defendant, Albert Gonzalez? Yes. yes. For $3,175, $2,500 of that is an unpaid loan and the rest interest yes, on the loan? Okay, so why don't we start from the very beginning? What's going on here? Okay, Albert is my brother, mm -hmm. and he is one of five siblings, and I'm the baby. And uh, about nine years ago, I was at the casino and I won a large sum of money, 690 something thousand dollars. Wow, okay. And well, what game were you playing? I was playing the Wheel of <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing the Wheel of Fortune. So, they, did they give you one of those big checks? Like, yes, how do they ma work? Wow. They did. And do you have a copy of it? Yes, I do. Let me see it. I'm just curious. <laughs> Let me see what it looks like. Let's pull it up. Wow. So you, so you hit the jackpot in 2004? Yes. All right, go okay. ahead. Okay, so I decided to take the lump sum, mm -hmm. okay? So I what did they say when you came home and told them <laughs> I just won almost $700,000 at the casino? They were shocked. Like, the, I think at first they were like, you're lying. But no, it was true. I mean, I came home with a, a check. <laughs> yeah, so, so what was the first thing you bought for yourself? Um, I probably went clothes shopping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Amongst a whole lot of other things. So when did you first hear that she'd won $700,000? A cousin of mine had called me and told me. What was your response to that? I was like, wow. Let me call <laughs> my sister. Well, I didn't call her right away because I knew everybody was calling her. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't call her. I didn't call her for a few months, I don't think. I, I... Were the two of you close at the time? Uh, we, well, we had, I had moved to Nevada in 2000, so we weren't, you know... I mean, we hung out and, you know. We're brothers and sisters. We fight, we argue, we, you know, we make up, we get mad, it, you know, say it happens. I, I got a call from my mom and she asked me if my brother could borrow some money. So that's what I was gonna ask you, did a lot of people start calling you and asking for money? People I didn't even, um, People that I didn't know as well were asking me for money. Mm -hmm. Was it then. on the news? Was it like no, on your local, okay. No. But people just heard through the grapevine that you won all this money. Right. And you were getting a lot of calls and texts, okay. Um, so she had asked if he could borrow the money. Well, how much money? He wanted to borrow $3,000 to to enroll in a truck driving school. Is that true? Yes, it is. Well, was this a, a loan you were asking for? Yes. So you were gonna pay it back? Yes. Okay. And he was gonna pay it back the following year when he received his uh, um, income tax returns. Your Honor, that, that's a, a mistake. I, she had told me I could pay her back when, when I was able to. Right, because she's rolling in it at this point, so she's, she's not pressed. And I, I figured, at the time, I figured just, that was just a drop in the bucket of however much money she had. I didn't know exactly how much money she had. Mm -hmm. I just knew she, she So did you ever pay her anything? What's your defense to? Yeah, I did pay her. I did pay her some. When I moved back to California, uh, I got married in 06, and um, she didn't go to my wedding, which kind of hurt a little bit, but... Why didn't you go to the wedding?
You know, I, I can't say why. You're on vacation somewhere? I probably. In the Caribbean? <laughs> <laughs> Not the Caribbean, but I was somewhere. Okay. So after we got married, my parents got into an accident, so my mom hurt herself really bad. Mm -hmm. So we moved back to help them out with the family business, and that's when stuff started happening. You know, stuff went sour with Loretta. She started being real angry with me. Coming up, was the money a lucky break or a hard lesson? You know, I, I wish I would have won that money at a different time in my life. People start spending lavishly and not thinking about the future, just start thinking about the present. So it's actually not uncommon. And later, a TV repairman and his customer face off in court. I had faith in him that he was gonna do a good job. I got the TV set working with a beautiful colored picture, but it had those little fine lines at the bottom. You paid him after the TV was working, so why have you sued him now? Plaintiff Loretta Holmes says her brother is refusing to pay back the money she loaned him for truck driving school. She's suing for an unpaid loan. Defendant Albert Gonzalez says he paid a portion of the money back and his sister forgave the rest of the loan. Do you have any of the money left? No, ma'am. It's all gone? What do you have to show for the money now? What do I have to show for mm -hmm. it? I have furniture that I bought still. You know, I didn't get all 600 and something. Th I only got half of that. Half of it, but now you only have furniture to show right, for it. Right, yeah. No investments? No. No, no, no house, no real estate investments? No, ma'am. I mean, it's really easy to say, oh, you know what? If I had this money, I'm going to do this and that. But when it's in your hand, it's a different story. There are stories about this, people who win the lottery, it's, it's, and they win huge lump sums of money, and it's gone it, like that. Because it happens. If it, when it happens and, and you don't have a financial plan in place, this is more money than, than you know what to do with, and people start spending lavishly and not thinking about the future, just start thinking about the present. So it's actually not uncommon. You know, I, I wish I would have got this money won that money at a different time in my life. Mm -hmm. I would have made completely different choices. Yeah. I really would have. But you live, you learn, you know? So are you suing other people besides no, him? Or, okay. <laughs> it's, it just, okay. Um, so, <laughs> because I know what you're thinking. All these people she gave money to, why am exactly. I here? Exactly. Right? Okay, go ahead, sir. Why do you say you don't, you don't owe her this? So I, get, I decided to give her, I, I can't recall how much money it was. I think it was like four or $500. I can't remember. It's 300, John. She said, okay, this will do for now, and laughed. So I, I figured uh, that'd Excuse be cool. Excuse me, I, Hold that's on a second. not true. Go ahead. I said, I figured that'd be good for, for a while. So after that, we, she didn't ask me for no money for, you know, until we moved back to Reno. And then every time we'd come back to visit, I felt really hurt and disrespected how she treated me and my wife mm -hmm. at family functions. When there'd be other family members there, she'd int introduce herself, skip my mm -hmm. wife, and then go to the next. Your Honor, his wife next, okay. had a mouth. If she wanted so, to introduce herself, she can. Okay, so so you're telling me you gave her four or five hundred dollars, and you thought the matter was was settled. Yeah. It doesn't sound yes. like it from the way she was. You say she was asking you for yes. money repeatedly. <clears throat> he said, "Here's three hundred dollars, and you're paid off in full." Is what he told me. He said, "Take it or leave it." And I said, "Well, okay." So I thought about it, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take it, but. Because I don't have a car right now, if you take me wherever I need to go, whenever I need to go, for a whole month, no questions asked, then you'll be paid in full with that $300. And you didn't have a car, so you needed a way to get I where, needed, back and forth to work? Wherever I needed to go. Doctor's appointments, if I needed to go to the casino, if I needed to go to a friend's what house. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the car My you car got? got impounded, and I wasn't able to get it out. Wait, your car got impounded for what? Because I didn't have a driver's license. I got a DUI back in, in like 1995. So since 1995, mm -hmm. all the way up until now we're in the mid 2000s, you did not have a driver's license. Yes. But I do now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 11 years since you loaned him this $3,000 and oral contracts in your state, you only have four years to bring a lawsuit to recover. But even if you weren't barred by the statute of limitations, you amended this contract with him, and you say he was supposed to drive you around for a month, and he didn't, but the judgment wouldn't be $3,000 for you in your favor because of that amendment. You spent a lot of money 
on a lot of people, I imagine, and gave a, a lot of people a lot of money. And, and he should not be the one that, that you hold responsible um, in, in terms of going after people to try to get money. Maybe the other people aren't in your lives anymore. Maybe you made a lot of friends and they're, they're no longer around. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, he is your brother. But I can't rule on this case because the statute is barred by the statute of limitations. Judgment this case for the defendant. Um, she's still my little sister. I love her, you know. I hope we just get, get through this and hang out again like we used to. Time limit. I didn't give him to, a time limit to pay me back. So, you know, it's just not fair. Plaintiff Rosalind Woodfork says a defendant failed to fix her big screen TV and then wanted to charge her extra. She's suing for the cost to repair her television and emotional distress. Defendant Fred Smith says he's had lots of satisfied customers, and Rosalind has gotten out of control with her complaints about his work. He's countersuing for emotional distress. Rosalind Woodfork? Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant, Fred Smith? Yes. For $500, the cost of a television, 300 of that is a television repair service you say he charged you for, and 200 of that is for emotional distress? Yes, Your Honor. And you're countersuing for $500 for emotional distress? Yes. yes okay, Your Honor. well, why don't we start from the beginning? You tell me what happened. Okay, well, my TV broke down about December of the year 13, and, um, it took about a year for me to get the extra funds because I'm on a fixed income and I'm disabled. What kind of TV is it? It's a 52-inch HD TV. It's a 2007 yeah, 2007. Your Honor, Mr. that's okay, not so an 07 TV. television set. What, do you, what year do you say it is? It's uh, maybe a uh, 98 or something like that. Okay, and it's that's some, your TV, ma'am? Yes, set. yes, ma'am. And not wait a minute, hold up. First of all, She might have purchased it in 07. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't, Sorry, don't talk honest. to him, oh, ma'am. Right. Okay. Talk to me. Go okay, ahead. but when it all boils down, I love my TV set and I want it to fix <laughs> because I like to sit in my front room and watch movies. And I was happy that I was able to get the extra income to get it fixed. So I chose okay. Mr. Fred Smith due to the fact the estimate goes in with the total bill. But before, be, before I, he came out, I called him and I asked him, I said, yes, are y'all still repairing TVs? Because it was a lease and they was closed down. Okay. And, uh, well, due to the riots, you know, we had to close down due to the Ferguson riots. That, okay, that so you're right, you're right outside of St. Louis. That. Okay, but your business, your business wasn't burned down or anything. No, it you wasn't burned down. down, it just slowed down Slow significantly. Down and how long had you had your, your business at that location? Uh, actually, five years. Mm -hmm. But I've been in business for 35 years, professionally for 35 years. And what is it that you do exactly? Mm -hmm. uh, electronic repairment. So you should be an expert. I this. am an expert. <laughs> okay. The agreement was that it was $60 for him to come out and do an estimate. That means to let me know what's all wrong with my television. And how much it would cost to repair it. Right. And he tells you that the $60, if you choose to hire him, right. will go towards the repairs for the TV. Yes, Your Honor. So she, comes have, out... she didn't have the six. She didn't have the, uh, uh, the total repair. I, t I told her it'd be about $300 to repair it. She didn't have the, all the money at mm -hmm. the time. And mm -hmm. I just let it, uh, she called me up about two weeks later, or three weeks later, say she had the money, and I returned to her home. And I got the TV set working. Okay. It with, a, with a beautiful colored picture. But it had those little fine lines at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I told her that she needed a convergence board, and the convergence board would cost approximately another $100. Okay. But wait she a minute. Said so what's she the issue? Have a convergence board. Wait a minute. Your have Honor. $100. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let Ms. me put Ms. some Ms. real pimping in it. Your Honor. Calm he... down. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, <laughs> uh, Your Honor, look here. Mr. Fred, instead of giving him 60, I gave him 80. Because I wanted him to do the work. I had faith in him that he was going to do a good job. You paid him after the TV came on and was working. So why have you sued him now? It when was I... black. And you had a black screen before he came out. Right. He put right. a power board on it. Now it's working. Right. What right. is but the, the issue? But the color didn't come all the way in. But how the do I know what the color looked like on the TV right. I... prior to him right. fixing it? It was a black screen. How does he know what the color looked like exactly. prior to fixing it? It was a right. black screen. Right. When he put the color board in, Your Honor, that's when I started seeing double words 
and, and, and the little red line in the corner. You wasn't you saying that because it was, a, it was a little dark. Or in his basement and got this used part and told me to throw my part away, but I didn't throw it away. I kept it. Then he turned around and said he'll fix it, and then he said he needs some gas money. Need some gas, now, man. Come I didn't on, tell man. you nothing like okay, that. Okay, all right. That's all right. right. I've, I've heard enough. Right I've heard enough. I've heard enough. Do you have any other evidence to support your claim that he should be responsible for giving you a refund mm -hmm. that he didn't do proper work on the television? Yes, I do, Your Honor. I call the Business Better Bureau. He the Better got, Business uh, Bureau. That doesn't have anything I, to do with has, that. He has like 12 complaints the year of 2014. One just before I call in February, January 15. I Let have the proof that. right here and statements from the Better Business Bureau. That doesn't have anything to do with this case, Hold Your Hold on Honor. a second, sir. Nothing at all. I make that determination. Okay. Coming up on Judge Faith, he had a history of bad behavior. I've had thousands of customers. I've been in the business 35 years. According to the Better Business Bureau, they recommend that people not use your services. They suggest caution when dealing with you. Plaintiff Rosalind Woodfork says Fred failed to properly repair her TV. She's suing for the cost to repair her television and emotional distress. Defendant Fred Smith says he got the TV working and Rosalind is harassing him for no reason. He's countersuing for emotional distress. Okay, so the Better Business Bureau gave you the lowest grade possible, an F grade. Are you aware yeah, of that? Yeah, that's what doing the, the riot kind of caused that, you know, kind of caused some well, of the Well, actually, problem. no, they said that they recorded 17 complaints and reports on your company at the time of this at statement. How many in years? the past 36 months. 36 months? The president and CEO of the company said that they've had a long history of problems with your company. They suggest caution when dealing with you. You may have 17 or whatever. Uh, 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 issues there. However, I, I, I've had thousands of customers. I've been in the business 35 years. So a 78-year-old retired school teacher from Ferguson told the Bureau, made a complaint, said that she was fed up with <laughs> your work and at one point discovered her TV set on a sidewalk outside of the business. Another St. Louis man said he paid you $325 to repair his set. After three failed attempts to fix the TV, you stopped returning his phone calls. I don't know who that was. According to the Better Business Bureau, they recommend that people not use your services. This tells me that you have a history Well, after here, 35 years, you it's... can't satisfy everybody. If I satisfy 85% of my customer or 90%, uh, that's the best I can do. But you can't satisfy all of your customers. That's, that's, that's nearly impossible. There's a reason they gave you an F, which is the lowest possible grade. And it's well, not because they found that you satisfied 85% to 90% of your customers. That's it's what I did. It's because they have found that you have done substandard work so many times in the past that in 36 months, they received it, 17 complaints. It wasn't complaints. substandard with her. Her TV set was, was dead when I first went to her home. Okay. And it's, now it's got a picture on it and it's got sound. I mean, this, this certainly sheds new light on this case and, and this plaintiff's complaint against you. Coming up, Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. I'm actually going to, uh, you have a counterclaim for emotional distress. I'm going to dismiss that. I'm going to order you to refund the plaintiff her $300 for television repair. That's for two reasons. One, you don't listen. Uh, two, um, I, and clearly, clearly there is an issue here with, with, with your work, clearly. 17 complaints in 36 months is hmm. extreme. Well, I had $300, to... judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you, Judge, Thank you, Your Honor. Yes! <laughs> that is exactly what you get trying to get over and use single women and use other people, and I had to be the one to bring you out the closet to let everybody know you ain't no TV repair man, you whack. Uh, they might, might, might not be satisfied with they, uh, uh, the work, some of them, but no one has said I stole what they actually stole what they tell me to say. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.